What's up guys, it is me Jamar Dawson, Remnant Outdoors, hope you're doing great today. Today I want to talk about two types of home defense shotgun ammo. One, we got the Winchester PDX-1 12 gauge defense round. Number two, we got the tried and true classic. This is Estate Double Lot Buckshot 9 pellets. Let's go ahead and get started. So the PDX-1 defender round is a 12 gauge round. It features three plated double lot buck pellets nested on top of a one ounce rifled slug. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You get a really cool pattern which has three pellets being equidistant from each other and at the epicenter, if you will, you have your one ounce slug. Uh, really cool, fires in a variety of shotguns. If I didn't mention it before, it's two and three quarters. The next thing that we're gonna compare that to is the Estate two and three quarters, nine pellet double lot buck. This is not plated. Um, this is just real, your standard tried and true double lock buck round that you've probably had for uh, about a century in circulation. The one thing about the standard double lock buck round is that you're going to be able to find it just about anywhere, especially when there's times where there's not as much availability of all the types of ammo, you're going to almost always be able to find double lock buck. So I really like it for that reason. Price wise, the Defender rounds, this is going to run you for a box of 10, about $25. If you're looking at just a standard double lot buck, so the state sells theirs in boxes of 25. If you divide that out from the price that you could find at a normal store, you're getting uh, roughly for a box of 10, so to speak, you're gonna get about $15.60 compared to uh, $25 for a box of 10 with the PDX-1 Defender round. So significant difference in price, but these are some defense loads we're talking about. It's not like you're shooting a whole bunch of them every time you go to the range. You're just gonna have a few loaded up in your shotgun for the unfortunate time you may need it. As far as speed, these are relatively similar. For the PDX-1 rounds, that's about 1150 feet per second. For the standard buckshot from the state, it's about 1325. The reason why there's a difference of about 200 feet per second is because remember, you have a one ounce slug. You're also trying to push through down range, so that's what's slowing things down just a little bit for speed, but it really doesn't matter. When you're talking about home defense close quarters, one of the most important things is knockdown power. That's a little bit more important than speed at that point. Let's go ahead and head to the range, do a quick 10 yard test, and really see how the gun patterns and how it penetrates slash destructs stuff. All right, let's go ahead and start at 10 yards with the defender rounds. All right, so we're up close now, and as you guys can see, there was some pretty decent damage here. You got, obviously, the big main hole. I was aiming like right here. Um, this was where the rifle slug went through. Buckshot spread out very nicely, uh, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's almost exactly equidistant from that center hole, as you can see here. Obviously, you got the wad penetrating. That won't really do any major damage to a person. But, man, this is this is really, really good. As far as from the, the center uh, you're getting at least a two inch radius from each, for each of these pellets. So it's traveling and giving a little bit of a spread there. So you're having a little bit of forgiveness. So even if you miss with this pellet, even if you miss with the rifle slug, even if you miss with this pellet, this should at least touch it. This is about a nine millimeter equivalent, you know, plus or minus a little bit. But so you're, you're getting some good coverage here. And if you hit with the, the rifle slug and a pellet or two, then you're definitely going to be doing some considerable damage. All right, cool. We just saw the spread pattern of the Defender rounds. Let's check out the spread pattern just for comparison's sake of Double Lot Buck at 10 yards. All right. So, as we can see here, some of this is from the wadding and things like that, but we have a pretty decent spread. Uh, you're getting hit with quite a few pellets. Uh, I was aiming right here. You get hit with a, quite a few pellets uh, at a decent size at double lot buck. The spread is negligible between the standard double lot buck and the defender rounds, although the defender rounds just seem to have a little bit more 
uh, spread. The recoil is negligible. I believe that the recoil was very similar, very manageable. It didn't feel like I was getting hit, like I said, with brass knuckles with either one. Uh, as far as the actual felt impact, I don't know. We'd have to do some gelatin tests, which may be something I look to in the future. But I mean, it, I think either one really is, is, is reasonable. All right, next I want to go ahead and do a little destruction slash lethality test. This is not the best test of lethality, but these jugs are all that I had to work with at the time. What I did was I filled up two jugs with water, put them behind one another and shot with each type of ammo. But unfortunately, it destroyed like both jugs, each shot from both of the different types of ammo destroyed both jugs. So I couldn't really do a great comparison. So I got four jugs this time and said, let me take a look to see what it does. If it could reach the fourth jug, what kind of destruction can we see visually? So that's what we did. So I saw that the rounds really started slowing down about the third and fourth jug. So let's go ahead and review what those look like. For the third jug, we had five pellets enter and exit the jug. And then we had three pellets enter for the fourth jug. One stayed in and the other two exited. So pretty decent penetration out to the last jug using standard buckshot. Let's take a look now on the third and fourth jug for the defender rounds. For the third jug, we had two pellets enter and exit along with the one ounce slug. And then on the fourth jug, we had the one ounce slug and two pellets enter, but one of the pellets didn't make it all the way through the jug. Of course, the one ounce slug continued barreling on through. Now these were kind of simple tests, but it did show that there's still a high amount of energy being transferred all the way out through four gallons of water in plastic jugs. So that's pretty interesting, pretty significant. One little caveat that's kind of interesting to note with the PDX-1 Defender rounds, it's three plated buckshot BBs. So that really helps them to fly true and not be deformed as much. Now, when you're talking about a home defense situation, uh, you may not want something to not deform. You may want it to deform and flatten and really transfer that energy into a particular surface or target uh, versus continuing to push through those targets. Uh, but overall, both of the ammo types perform really well. If you could find both of these, I mean, you can't really go wrong with either choice. I thought I was gonna have a definitive choice at the end of this test and review, but really either one isn't bad. I mean, what I would do right now is I load Defender Round, standard buckshot, defender round, standard buckshot, just one after the other. You're getting good coverage. The spread's about the same. The price on one is a little bit more, but like I said, it's not like you're shooting a whole bunch of them. Uh, and you're really getting uh, enough knockdown force, especially with that slug. I'm not a big fan of just having slugs for your defense and your shotgun. It's better just to have something like a semi-automatic rifle if you're just gonna have one projectile at a time. But when you start adding and accounting for uh, spread, which is probably necessary in a home defense situation where you have to make a split second decision. And because you're in the heat of the moment, you may need some forgiveness, so to speak, with your aim. Uh, using Defender Rounds or Double Lot Buck, I believe, is good enough. We use 10 yards as kind of a home standoff distance in our test, and it spread reasonably well based off of those distances. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Regardless of what you guys choose to deploy, Please follow your local rules and regulations. Do it in a safe, responsible manner. And please make us gun owners look good in what you do. If you do have a chance to, check out the link in the description below. It's about defense insurance. You guys might have heard me talk about it before. If you're ever in a situation where you deploy your weapon and fire your weapon, it's always good to have a lawyer on tap. If you have defense insurance, it's even better because so many different things are already paid for. You don't have to go tens or hundreds of thousand dollars in debt covering certain legal fees because you have defense insurance. So make sure you check that out. Use my link, use my code, Remnant. It should be pretty simple to remember uh, and get yourself covered. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Please give me a like and a thumbs up if you enjoyed this type of content so I can know to continue to make this type of stuff. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. Please be sure to check back soon. Comment if you have any questions down below. God bless, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.